All right, guys, what's going on? Um, gonna start building the or rebuilding the three liter V6 for my 92 Ford Ranger. So, um, I got the block cleaned up. Um, I got parts all over the place. Um, real quick, off camera, I did the, the valve seals. Um, so I got a small little video I'll throw in here of me doing it. Um, but I'm not going to do a full complete rebuild. I'm just going to do a rebearing, re-ring uh, kit because I need to get my thing up and running. My 250 is starting to act up, so I want to get this up and running. Plus, I want to go off-roading, and my buddies are all going up to the mountains here in the next two weeks, two, three weeks, so kind of want to go if they're still down. But um, So what I'm going to do, same as the 305, I'm just going to get everything tidied up. Um, I'll come back and forth every once in a while. I'm not going to be doing a big old time lapse. Um, I'll just do all the key points like torque specs for everything, torque pattern. Um, I'm not going to bore you with the time lapses. So let me go ahead and get into it and I will be right back. All right. So got the lower bearing or upper bearings if you want to talk about upper and lower based off the rotation of the motor. But I got the half of the bearings in. Um, Still using Justice Brothers gear oil treatment. Um, it's really good for assembly lube as it is. Um, it holds pretty well. Um, I've had those soaking in there. I just ball honed the cylinders back up a little bit, but it's still sitting in there pretty good. So they, they must know their stuff. So I'm just gonna put a little dab on all these and then grab the crankshaft and throw it on in. What's going on guys? Um, I'm back out here working on the trailer. It's the next day. Um, sorry, I forgot to film last night, but um, I'll briefly go over uh, what I did. Um, so, got the the crankshaft in, oil filter, oil pump. Um, I may need to move this out of the way for these two pistons right here, um, but that's my today's problem. Um, so, new rear main seal, new front seal, timing cover, uh, new harmonic balancer. Uh, through the old water pump back on um, Timing chain and all that is brand new too. crankshafts in and all that So I'm gonna get started the main caps were torqued down to 66 foot-pounds um, and then the oil pump was 44 pounds foot-pounds the harmonic balancer is a hundred and seven foot-pounds now when I tightened this down what I ended up doing was taking that rubber hammer it has a rubber handle on it laying it across here and let the lobes push down on it so it would destroy the hammer or uh, bend the hammer so I can tighten it down and that acted as a lock because I don't have anything back here to hold it and I'm not sticking a bar through over the journals to, to lock to knock it down so with that being said um, Today's thing is I got my piston rings in so I'm going to clean up the piston uh, heads uh, re-ring it and then um, get them installed and um, I'm going to try and make an effort um, to get the um, video footage of me going along um, and then I'm also going to help you guys um, if it's your first time with um, doing this head gaskets on it um, I'll show you the uh, head torque pr procedure and go from there. So let me go ahead and put the camera down. I'm going to get my pistons cleaned up um, Get the rings on pretty much standard. So I'll be right back All right guys, so real quick. I'm working on the last piston um, This is after um, Just wire wheeling it off. Um, I see the picture here of what this piston looked like compared to the others uh, what it used to look like so um, real quick the one thing I do want to go over is um, make sure every company's uh, rings are different um, in aspect of which way they go into so they give you they give you this little paper um, sometimes the ring will have a little bevel a little dot or something uh, as you see for top ring um, in my case, I have this one, so there's no up or down side of it. It's just beveled on both sides. Um, but the second ring, however, see how this bevel goes down and there's a dot? Um, I have, let me see, where's the second ring? Here's the second ring. I have, 
Uh, where's that? There. I don't know how well you can really see that. And you can probably see it right there. But um, I have that little bevel. Oh, there we go. If the camera would focus. Oh, I'll take a picture. Um, I have that bevel on here. But I also have written up on the portion it says top. I don't know if you can barely see that. Depending on the quality of video you're, you're looking at. Um, I'll get some good pictures of this for you guys. Don't worry. But this actually, the bevel goes down for the second ring. Um, for the oil ring itself, that's top. Um, oh yeah, this one fell on the floor. So this one right here where it splits you don't want them overlapped like that you want them butted up um every manufacturer that uses this style that i know of wants you to butt them up like this so you have up down up down and then you'll have like a w and then up down up down up down they don't want you crossing it over because when you do it it basically folds over on itself and it causes tension on the on the wiper rings for the the oil ring, so just make sure that it's like that, and it'll be a lot easier. There is on the back those little notches where the wiper ring would sit on, so you don't have to really worry about it fall, uh, falling through. But you do want to put this one on first before the wiper rings, and the wiper rings are a hell of a lot smaller than anything else. So. Um, Got the last piston to go. Um, got the rod bearing right there. Um, as you see, I got them pretty much already all the way in. Um, for this one, the torque spec is uh, 26 foot pounds. Very light. So careful because if you are using a uh, click style torque wrench, it'll come up on you quick. And what I would recommend using is a digital one. You don't have to get the fancy snap on, but if you have a digital one, it's a lot easier to see when you're coming up on it that way you don't overshoot it so but let me go ahead and get this last piston taken care of and then um i'll get this thing flipped over um, put the oil pan on um those are just uh like all these eight mil bolts so they're just hand tight so nothing too special for that one but i'll be right back when i get the cylinder heads in all right guys so i got the one cylinder head on um let me go ahead and show you the, the torque spec. Um, I put a diagram here up on the screen so you can see what it actually is um, of how in the order it goes in and then also the actual torque specs. So basically, first pass, what I like to do is I like just to get them snug down so that I don't have to do that much tightening. Then you go through and the first one is 59 foot pounds, all of them. Once you do that, one full rotation back it'll loosen them up all the way but then just go kind of like tighten them back down but not over tightening because the next one is 37 foot pounds so i don't know why ford went 59 back to 37 and then the final torque of 68 foot pounds but that'll that'll put you at the final torque um they are torque to yield bolts so once you use them that's it. You can't take them off, reuse them because um, it's th those bolts are not designed like that. They're they're stretch bolts, so you're you have the potential of either snapping them in the head during torquing if you reuse them, or damage to the block. Um, I've seen them break off in the block, and it's a nightmare. Sometimes you get lucky; they break up like up in here, but other times. Just get new ones if you're going to do a head gasket or pull the heads off for any reason. Um, they're, they're, they're not expensive. I think I paid like 25 bucks for uh, the set of Victor Reigns um, head bolts. But um, that's the procedure. 59, one turn off, 37, 68. So let me go ahead and get the other side in. And then I'll be back when the push rods are in. So give me right sick. One more little quick tidbit, and I, I noticed this, and I forgot to mention this. Um, the head gaskets are specific per side. Um, the way they're designed, or the heads are designed, is this area is is basically blocked off underneath. So the coolant 
runs to the back of the motor right here and then runs forward in the head so there's no opening right here so if you pull the block off you see there's an opening however on the head gasket with the letters up it'll say up rear so the facing up towards the rear for this portion and the other side had the same thing too up front so um just keep that in mind um they do look the same they will bolt up however if you do that um the back of the motor will not get sufficient cooling and you can cause damage in the back heads um on the newer trucks and uh, the newer three liter push rod motors they have a cylinder head uh cylinder head temperature sensor that sits in the back and if it's too hot in the back compared to what the temp sensor is up in the front you'll get a check engine light and i see that commonly because they never had the coat before they did a head gasket and they just weren't paying attention so keep that in mind when you're putting this back in so i'll be right back all right guys once again i got ahead of myself with this um i'm just i'm, I'm getting excited I'm, I'm like a kid on christmas day um i haven't had the ranger running and or i haven't actually really driven it like going places i mean i've moved it down my driveway and all that but to actually move it under its own power and drive it is is one thing so um i got a little ahead of myself but basically i got the push rods in all that got them all tightened down um this isn't like the 305 because of the fact that there is um the trunnions they get bolted straight to the head so i torqued all these down to 25 foot pounds and um basically how i i tighten them down cylinder one in the firing order so one four two let see it was a, oh no one four two five three six that's the firing order and if you're ever confused a lot of these older vehicles it's right there firing order one four two five three six don't forget that this one is the easy one because it's one through three four five six and it's just boop 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 boop, boop all the way back so um i got the lower plenum valley cover whatever you want to say it, it's all in one um i got that torque down um i just drove these in um i think to like 25 foot pounds i didn't actually really torque those in i just zipped them in with with my little gun so got those in um the only thing that i would recommend is i can probably see it from the back here you have this little rubber molded gasket bolt on the front and rear put a little silicone right here in the corners on on all four corners um, that just prevents it from from leaking oil um, i got my exhaust manifolds on both sides um, decided to put them on here because um, it is small enough to fit through the door of my trailer i mean obviously i don't have anything out the back because i haven't built my trailer yet but I mean, this motor is small enough uh, width-wise where it'll go through that door, and that's how we put it in. We left the exhaust on because it's a pain in the butt to get it off because of the the AC air box that sits right here. So when I go and put this in, this valve cover and the or both valve covers will be on, ready to be dropped in because right back here is a pain in the ass to get to. So um, everything's in. Oil is not in the motor yet. Um, I gotta go get that. Um, so, cause the, the oil that I use for this, I had to do an oil change on a friend's car. They didn't have the oil or filter. I actually had their filter. So they paid me to do the oil change and they use the same oil as this. So um, gonna go get the oil tomorrow. But basically I'm gonna go tomorrow, get the oil and then this motor is going to be going into the truck tomorrow. And my plan is to get it fired up. It shouldn't really take me that long at all to drop it in. Um, the exhaust bolts, it's bouncy. The exhaust bolts from the down pipes, from the, the manifolds down to down pipes, two bolts each side. Um, starter goes in the transmission, clutch, flywheel, pressure plate, all that goes back together. Transmission put back in. If I could set it down on the mounts, put the fucking mount bolts in, probably get everything all fucking plumbed up for the fuel. I'm getting really excited. <laughs> I mean, there's there's still a lot of stuff that needs to be done, but 
it's not going to take me that much at all. I don't have to pull the whole front end apart like I did with the 250. So get this dropped in tomorrow. Hopefully I can get it started. Um, I am, however, going to take my battery um, and get it charged because it's been sitting for a long time. The battery's probably dead. It's probably no good, so I'll probably end up getting a new one. Um, but other than that, I mean, hope you guys are excited as I am. Um, but I will actually end off with a video of the last time that I actually drove it. So you guys kind of get a hear, say, of what it sounds like. But that was when it was inside the cab. So um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I'm getting really excited. I mean, the 250 was one thing, but this is my baby. And I want this thing back up and running. So um, hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you guys in the morning. But this is the end of the video. So hope you liked it. Go ahead and like, subscribe, comments. Um, but yeah, I'm, 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 I'm like a little kid right now. So um, I'll see you guys tomorrow in the next video. Peace.